static and dynamic compositions are two ways of, of um, labeling a compositional space. A compositional space is static when the primary line of movement is horizontal or vertical, and it's dynamic when the primary movement is diagonal. A static composition is at rest. For instance, this composition, uh, an old Woman's Day advertisement from the 50s, is a static composition. The movement, the first movement, is the baseline of the typography for go out. So here we read going across the page. That's, your, that's the first place where you look. Um, and so we're going to label this a static composition. Secondarily, there's a vertical movement. And third, you might also notice a diagonal movement. Just because we do have a diagonal movement in this composition does not make the composition dynamic. The woman is balanced on a bike, the two letters acting as the wheels, um, and the child is balanced in the basket. Uh, for this to be vertical, we would have a sort of different um, feeling or a set of energy about the work, and we, we actually want to feel uh, her as a, as a bit stable um, and not as a sort of crazy person who's biking over the moon to get Woman's Day. This is also a static composition. The primary movement is vertical. Here we have a dynamic composition. The Powerpuff Girls are kind of stacked and they recede in space and your eye starts here and moves up towards uh, the, the top character and then down towards the back character. So we have two diagonal movements. Those are our primary movements in this dynamic composition. Here we have a cover for a magazine in which the photograph is dynamic, but the layout of the cover, the whole space, is static. We read the cover as three rows, one, two, and three. And so these three horizontal movements really comprise the total compositional space. This magazine cover is dynamic. Our main movement is diagonal. Even though we have text that is horizontal, the text recedes into the background, and the leg with the shoe here um, is the first thing, it's the most important thing that you're looking at due to the high contrast in the skin tones versus the black back background. This is a, a shot of the crowd at the um, address that Andy Samberg gave to the Harvard commencement in 2012. And an image like this uh, creates a pattern. We would call this an all-over pattern. And when there's a pattern without a very specific focal point, uh, we'll read the pattern either uh, horizontally or vertically, in which case we're going to call this a static composition. Here's a, a piece from YouTube. Uh, this is actually kind of fun to look at. It's, it's a Star Wars a cappella piece. And the overall frame is split into four individual grids. All four grids are treated equally. They're all the same size. There's the same framing in each one of, of, of the person. Um, the person is centered in the frame. So we're repeating the same um, kind of composition over and over again. We're going to read this either as two rows or as two columns. Uh, this will be a static composition. In motion graphics, uh, film, movies, video, uh, we have lots of frames, one after the next. So in a film, it's very likely that you'll see a static composition followed by a dynamic composition followed by a static composition, and so forth. The very start of Star Wars, we have a static logo. Uh, but not too far into it, we have dynamic set typography, where this diagonal lines receding towards uh, the kind of perspective receding towards the back um, gives us a, a dynamic composition. And lastly, this is a little bit ironic, we have a static composition for a band that made a career out of being unstable. <laughs>